America. I grew up in the land where phrases like, I have a dream, meant something. I grew up where I believed that freedom existed, that that's what I was fighting for. I believed that the Statue of Liberty was a symbol of our liberty, that we all came from all over the world, because we didn't want to live underneath the monarchy. America, the land of the free and the land of the brave. I don't care what you say to me. I don't care if there's a shadow government or there's people out there that's trying to take it away from us. This is America, damn it, and I'm taking it back. And now your host, Terry Joyce. All right, uh, so it is Hillary's emails, Bernie. Sanders and Max Spears. Uh, it has been uh, on my mind uh, basically uh, for the uh, first part of the day uh, today uh, because there's just so much going on, as, as, as I always say. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've had a pretty, pretty busy morning and uh, early afternoon with just, uh, I don't know, information being sent to me and flying in my direction from all, all angles. Sometimes I get so overwhelmed. Uh, but uh, and, and just so you know, uh, you were listening uh, to the uh, Freedom of Joyce show here on American Freedom Radio, but you probably already know that. And maybe that's why you're tuned in or not. Or maybe you're just surfing the web and going, oh, my God, uh, you know, what, what, oh, what's this American Freedom Radio? Click, and here I am talking to you. Uh, but welcome to the show. Uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, first of all, I want to start off uh, with Max Spears. So I'm want to I'm going to just kind of like hit the the, the major highlights um, on points that I just have questions about. Uh, I, I I do want to um, say I am not accusing somebody or anybody because even I don't have that particular proof of whether or not somebody's on the level or not. I can say, uh, like, for example, uh, I don't know, it, to, in my opinion, when I look at the picture of um, Max Spears with Stuart Swerdlow, with Stuart Swerdlow's arm around him, and the look on his face, and the way um, Max Spears' um, uh, body he, um, he is, his, his body, body language, he looks uncomfortable to me, and I'm sorry, but Stuart Swerdlow looks a little bit sinister in his eyes. That's just my feeling. That I mean, I can look at that photo. If you looked at that photo and you wanted to like it, like like analyze it and, and and say what's going on there in that photo. I mean, you know, Max usually looks up at the camera and I think even his eyes are kind of averted down a, a, a little bit in, in in his pictures. I mean, it it's it's and I and honestly I am not the only person to have this opinion about that photo. It's not something that I just decided to make up and assume. It is something that I had somebody say to me as well, and I agreed with them. Now, whether it is or is, isn't, you know, a, a picture says a th tells a thousand words, right? So, you know, an image can, can convey everything, uh, and yet... Who knows? Maybe maybe Stuart Swerdlow looks sinister sometimes, or you know, funky, or you know, maybe maybe he maybe he maybe a, a mosquito was biting him in the back of the neck or something, and he had to look like I'm going to slap that mosquito off the back of my neck any second now. You know, I mean, maybe who knows? Uh, you know, who knows what the motivation that makes people look a certain way either? So it's all speculative in that sense. Hopefully I'm not rambling too much on that particular topic in the picture, but that's just one aspect. All right. One thing that I did notice that actually has spurned me into talking about this this morning, um, I would have done it yesterday, but yesterday wasn't the right day, and I wanted to do a little bit more research on it. Miles Johnson um, made a, um, a, 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 um, a statement Okay, and darn it, I had it all ready and, and pulled up here to read because I wrote it down to my friend. He made a statement on Facebook, and 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 the statement uh, was you know very specific. It said, "Here go, here goes. Here is what Miles said on FB. 
awaiting the autopsy report on Max Spears, which I expect to be a drug overdose, as Monica, Monica Duvall said, a mistake makes it nice and simple and clean. And I'm thinking, when did Monica Duvall say that he had a, it was a drug overdose? As Monica explained to me over several conversations was he was completely drug clean. He was off all the drugs. I mean, when, when, I mean, why, where is this drug overdose angle coming that they've already assumed that, um, the black l liquid coming out of his mouth and other parts of his body was based on a drug overdose? Now, I don't know. Is that what happens when you have a drug overdose? I've never, I've never been around anybody who's OD'd before. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, the only thing I know what that looks like is, is, is what's been shown to me in a movie, film, and television. Uh, because for me, it, it's, it's, I've never been around it. I've never had a call 911 for somebody who had OD'd. It's just, it just hasn't happened. Okay. Um, but it, it, I think it was pretty obvious um, that Max apparently may not have been feeling well for for a while um, before he had these particular symptoms. And one of the reasons why I know that, or that we know that, is that um, they, Christina Hart, Christina J. Hart from Queen of Hearts, uh, you know, and she has the um, Valkyrie show on the, on the, other, on the other network. Um, there's a video um, that was posted. It, it, it says July 14th, 2016. So it's basically two days um, before Max Spears passed away. And Christine Hart says uh, Christine was going to interview Max Spears on this show, but Max was extremely sick and had a migraine for three days, so was unable to do the interview. Christine talks about implants and being a targeted individual. Uh, so... I have not listened to this particular video completely in its entirety, but I, I did start it up at the beginning. I listened to a little bit there. I went into the middle into different portions to see, get kind of the highlights of what she was saying, and then went to the very end. Okay, and uh, and and basically she says it, it starts out where she's waiting for uh for for him to join her on air and then um he doesn't show up and then he at the very end apparently she's skyping with him and, and the video is about um i don't know 50 minutes long uh 55 minutes long something like that um now she has a two-hour show so uh basically um you know i guess because he didn't show up she decided to bail on the show and not continue the show and and she didn't do the full two hours uh, which I kind of think is kind of unusual um, because most of the time, you know, when when we as hosts like don't have somebody show up, uh, yeah, you keep talking. You know, you 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 need a feeling your two hours. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That and 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 the fact that um, I've worked on the other network and uh, I've never I've never known them to be happy with you if you decided to just bail on your show, um, you know, an hour into it because you know you've got to get somebody to come and grab the server. And you know, a bunch of people, you know, uh, squandered. I mean, you scrabbled to, 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 to get on there, or they'll try to get somebody to come in and replace you right away if you had an emergency. I mean, you just don't just like hang up and go, Well, guess what? Max didn't show up. I don't have another end of my show. And uh, I'm also going to point out this too that I have, you know, I've interviewed Christine. Um, she's not short on words, and uh, and, and I, don't, I don't mean that as an insult, it's always good when you're able to talk, especially if we're going to be in radio, right? <laughs> you got to be able to like talk because it's talk radio. Um, but I have listened to her shows before. I, I had listened to her, her. She did an interview with Miles Johnson where Miles Johnston um, was late joining the show and, uh, and she's, you know, had, you know, Max leave and him leave and she continues on with her show after he's there over. So she doesn't seem to have a problem with continuing a show when her guest doesn't show up. So I, I find that to be kind of unusual. Uh, now, I want to get back to 
uh, the Carrie Cassidy and the Miles Johnston interview, um, the first one that was done uh, right after um, Max Spears' death. Uh, that uh, interview you can see at the Project Camelot, and it says interview with Miles Johnston, R.E., regarding death of Max Spears' super Super soldier. And that's the title of, of the of the um, of the video. Now, in that video, uh, you know, Miles Johnston, uh, you know, brings in all of us into play. Uh, he talks about the fact that um, Max was in um, in um, Poland, Warsaw, Warsaw, Poland, and that um, she, she was staying with a woman named Monica Duval, and he calls her a lovely lady, which apparently I heard that, you know, Miles Johnston calls everybody lovely or woman. It's not, you know, not a euphemism of it. Because my question is, is how lovely is this woman <laughs> when, um, you know, she, she is around Max, when he is vomiting black fluid and having, and apparently, and I'm, I, I believe she was in and present in the last interview, That he does, uh, and that uh, the last interview that he does is um, with I, I I think it's um Alessander or something like that. Um, it, he's got a show. I'm actually scrolling to pull that up here for, uh, for a second too. Let me let me take a look at, at what the name of that show is. But I believe that that show was done in in Poland. So and the it's it's the last interview. I mean, because okay. I was I was friends with with Max Spears on Facebook, and I watched a lot of Max Spears postings on Facebook. I liked them. I found them to be informative. And the last um, three postings that I noticed of him, which all of them I I believe I had I had I had commented and I had actually personally interacted with him in those comments because he responded to my comments in his last three posts. Uh, the, the first one was about the fact that he was going to go back on the, and do an interview with this guy. And the second one, you know, and I, and I said, great. I love the first two. And, and the second one, he, he goes, I think it should be a trilogy or it should be, uh, you know, three in a row. Matter of fact, I bet I can bring up Max Spears's, um, Facebook really quick. Okay, so anyways, uh, it says filming a third interview with Alec today. That's how he writes it. I thought it would be much more powerful if it was done in a trinity. Thanks, everyone. And there's a picture of him with the guy who, who did the interview, who did his last interview, the interview that he is basically dying on. Um, and it's very difficult to, to listen to. And, uh, and, and being in the condition that he was in, uh, you have to question why they didn't stop filming and take him to a doctor. At that point, um, he had, he had, um, he had some, some, some major issues. Um, then he, um, he, oh my God, it's gone. Oh no, here it is. Okay. On July 9th, at 4.34 a.m., that's my time, um, he posted something about Michael Aquino, okay? And he says, why does Oliver Stone's real name, Oliver Silverstein, get an honorable mention in a book written by one of the most vile men on the planet in terms of child sex abuse, bloodletting, and murder? A book, okay, let me find it. A book called Mind Wars, written by Michael Aquino, pronounced Aquino, Alpha to the Omega, ruled by negative feminine energy, which was written to show basically how to control the human populace with psionic weaponry, um, amongst other things. His buddy, don't, and he puts it in parentheses, don't think in terms of linear time because they are using tech beyond that. Uh, Joseph Mengele, also known as, in parentheses, the angel of death, worked on similar themes but in different arms of control, twinning and torture. Silver is the color of the moon and represents negative feminine energy in this case. That's why when he was interviewed on Sean Stone's real name, Sean Silverstein, Aquino dyed his hair silver, also wearing a blue shirt to signify that he is a blue blood. 
Uh, Michael Aquino was held a very high position in the NSA, National Security Agency, and was the satanic priest there for some time and has incarnated multiple times in different bodies to continue what he calls the great work. I had heard, in fact, that he was Helena Bolatsky. Who knows? But he's been around causing suffering on his planet for tens of thousands of years and continues to do so. But he is far, far weaker than he, has, he ever has been before as he lost a number of relics or let's say they were stolen from him. Shame. Now, why is one of the sickest entities on the planet giving an honorable mention to his revolting mass control? Damn it, I lost my spot here. Whew. Okay, now, why is one of the sickest entities, let me make sure I'm connected because I'm, I'm actually doing a lot of talking here. Oh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool. I'm connected. All right. Okay, I will continue. Now, why is one of the sickest entity, entities on the planet giving an honorable mention in his revolting mass mind control book to Oliver Silverstein? Question mark. Reason being, Oliver Stone has covered up so many events with the lies he puts in his films that he, he's protected him in numerous times. One time in particular, I'll go into the comments, I bet Mr. James Woods is happy with Ollie too. James equals actor, programmer, monarch, slave, handler. They all protect themselves. In the Buzz B Queen B Saw show, named self-explanatory to those who know how do they communicate, Aquino has silver hair as a nod to the Silversteins. I've been face-to-face -face astrally with both Aquino and Mengla, and they are both very far from human and very far from a specific gender. Nobody has interviewed Michael Aquino and has asked strong, pertinent questions. The buzzsaw interview was like an ode to how great he is. It was shocking, and he has exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. He raped children in San Francisco and Presidio. He did do this. He continues to. He is a murderer. I put it out there that I will interview him. He knows who I am very well. And let's see if he can intellectualize his way out of the facts I know. Since a lot of deprogramming he triggers don't work anymore, so it's fair, It's a fair conversation. What will Tom, Tomlinson say about all this? I'm sorry, Mickey. Ricky Tomlinson, the Eggman, John Scarlett. I bet Chuck Norris is happy you got him out of the, the mess he got into, Mickey. So I felt the need to put this out there on Buzz, Buzz, Saw. It's not what it seems. And he has pictures of Michael Aquino. It says, he says, notice the silver hair, horned eyebrows, goats of Mendez. Bottom right, Joseph Mengla, he has age reduction technology and keeps himself at about 50 years old, lives in NYC. And there was, you know, he had a collage of pictures of, um, one was of Joseph, Joseph Mengla. And a young Aquino and an old Aquino and then a picture of Stan, Sean Stone, of which I clicked onto and his teeth, I'm sorry, but Sean's teeth look very strange in the photo, as if it's, he's shape-shifting, and it's, it's, or, or it's like, 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 it, it, like, the front ones are like, got it, like, like some of it's, some of it's missing. It's very weird. He has a very weird look on his face. And I happened to make a mention on it, and I said, I said he. I said it looks like um, you know uh, he's shape shifting. I said it looks like like Sean Stone is shape shifting, and he said great observation, Terry, or something like that. And and so you know I I, I took interest. I, I got interested in 
uh, Oliver Stone and in Sean Stone and also in the, the whole thing that he posted about Mike Aquino because uh, Michael Aquino because I mean I had I knew who he was I done I, I watched some videos about him I'm not I'm by the way I'm, I'm not I was nowhere near an expert and so I wanted to know more information about what he was talking about and you know I'm always interested in the connection between Hollywood and the CIA and the NSA and the Satanists and all that kind of stuff and so so it sparked an interest in me. Uh, I Oliver Stone's been on my mind lately, and mainly also because of the types of movies that he does. His movies are, you know, are about the Vietnam Vietnam War. They are about um, uh, icons about Jim Morrison, which we know now that um, he was part, uh, grew up in the military industrial complex, and, and was basically, um, you know, fabricated out of Laurel Canyon, and that his father was part of the Tonkin incidents, which most people, a lot of people, think is a false flag that actually gave us an excuse to, to have the Vietnam War in the first place. That's an, but, but, you know, in the Oliver Stone movie, that's not what we see. We don't see that version of the story. We don't see him hanging around with the mamas and the papas and Frank Zappa. We see this other, you know, version of him hanging on the beach and reading some poetry and going, hey, let's start a band, man. Let's do it. Yeah, let's call it The Doors, you know, The Doors of Perception. You know, I mean, that's what we that's, we get that version. I'm not saying that that didn't happen, that they were non-Venice Beach, you know, coming up with inspiration. Because God knows how many people have infer, you know, inspiration on Venice Beach. But, you know, you have to wonder why, you know, these kind of movies are coming out to people that are explaining lifestyles or points of history that people have conspiracy theories about. He basically is our version of the conspiracy theory director giving us answers to conspiracy theories that, that may or may that, that look like they are not the maybe probably the right answers or they're part of the right answers but it's muddled up with a bunch of disinfo and we just like kind of like you know chalk it off to urban legend folklore about our history and our government and our world and what's really happening. Now I'm probably going to make a lot of some people really upset right now because I know I know Chuck O'Chelly loves Oliver Stone, <laughs> and um, and and I know Sean Stone's been on this network and you know hey I might be wrong all right I'm I I'm I'm not saying Sean Stone is Luciferian or he's a Satanist or you know that he's a reptilian shapeshifter and by the way hashtag repti reptilian lives matter I just want to point that out there for everybody um, but. I'm just, you know, when we're, when we're talking about, um, the mystery of Max Spears' death and what happened before he died, I don't see how we can't draw conclusions into that correlation. And I have watched uh, a lot of the videos, um, the, I, I guess I would say I watch explanations of the key players that are involved in this story that are Truth Media hosts as well as um, the actual, his last actual interview with Alec. So now in the Carrie Cassidy video, that is out there um, with Project Camelot, um, you know, the one that I mentioned, uh, the uh, um, the one that's uh, interview with Miles Johnston re, uh, regarding death of Max Spears and the Super Soldier. I have to go back because I was trying to get the, to the exact part that I heard it just to verify that I heard it, but I'm about, I would say, 95% sure that this is how I've heard it and this is how I understand it and this is how I understood it before I wanted to just double check it as how I understand it. And another friend of mine confirms on this. In the video, Miles Johnston mentions that Max Spears goes to Cyprus. All right. And somehow he had to get to a cafe to do an interview on Christina Hart's show. And that he actually did an hour of that show with her, and then they had a generator failure or some sort of blackout in the entire town, and Christine, Christine, Christina could not, Christine, it's not Christina, it's Christine, could not finish the interview, and she bailed off the show with an hour left to do on the other network. Because because she uh, because 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 of, because of the generator failure, and that she was supposed to be 
hosting that interview uh, as, uh, right right away, it, it, uh, up as, you know as quick as possible. And uh, but uh, and 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 they and were hoping to because they had gone through a lot of trouble to be able to get there and to be able to use the cafe and use their internet and 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 everything and they were hoping that I guess that their um, their efforts you know did not go on you know not you know not come to fruition well. I thought, well, hey, let me try to find that interview, and, you know, it took place on July 14th, and, you know, uh, Christina Hart, um, you know, basically, uh, no, uh, that is not what took place on that interview, and, uh, okay, wait, all you do is you, is you hear her saying, talking about him not being able to make it, then, then he, um, then he, uh, you know, about him not being able to uh, to, to, to to make it, and then he, um, and and because of being extremely sick. But first of all, she says that he, she's waiting for him, and then at the end of the interview, she, he he is actually skyping with her, telling her that he's sick, that he's had a, a headache, and 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 he's he's so sick that that he 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 could barely he could barely he just he just can't do the interview. And then she and she talks about how you know he's been targeted and how he says that he's been he's been targeted since he mentioned Michael Aquino um on on Facebook. So uh and it says Christine was going to interview Max Spears on this show, but Max was extremely sick and had a migraine for three days so was able unable to do the interview. Christine talks about implants of being a targeted individual. So what's going on here? Um, you know, I mean, if Miles Johnson is, is, is talking to Carrie Cassidy that, that he went to this, you know, cafe in Cyprus and then after he got back was when he seemed to kind of like get sick and they're not sure if he was poisoned or, or, or whatever. Um, they mentioned that he's on medication. Um, and, the, you know, and, I, and I'm assuming it sounds like it's a prescribed medication and that maybe that had, that was the case. Uh, I actually listened to a um, recent interview of Miles Johnston on Valkyrie and uh, uh, Christine Hart's show where they were going to talk about the death of Max Spears. She theorizes that he was taking too much aspirin because he was having these headaches, these migraines, and complaining of them and saying that they came on after, you know, Michael Aquino, his statement, and that he was being targeted and that it was murder because of the fact that he was, like, he over-medicated himself maybe with aspirin. Um, so now we have this aspirin aspect, and we have a speculation that he was um, sick for some reason, and he over medicated himself either with his own prescription or with or 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 on some sort of aspirin. Now I don't know if I, I don't know if anybody knows anybody that's OD'd on aspirin. Um, if if having uh, if spewing black blood uh, every from all of your orifice happens when you take um, over OD on aspirin, uh, I don't. No, I mean, I, I still need to do more research. I still need to Google this and find out. If you know, let me know. Make a comment on this YouTube video when it becomes a YouTube video. You tell me because uh, I'm not I'm not sure. Okay, but what I am seeing, and this is what I always find suspicious about our me of uh, the mainstream media, is again we have people speculating things. We have we have Miles Johnson texting on Facebook and acting like we can just wrap it up in a tiny little bow and just say that it's an overdose. Dose automatically. Um, there's another thing that I think is rather suspect, and I noticed is that there's a super soldier named James Rink, uh, and uh, and and this is the first time I've ever seen a video of him. But he does a video on Max Spears. Not only does he talk about um, uh, potential have been at a, at a mutual orgy with him, I guess like this is like part of their de you know the the program or whatever. Um, but he also mentions. Like we need to do the orgy, really orgy, orgy, orgy. Oh, okay. <laughs> he even looks at the camera and goes, "Should I say this?" Well, apparently it's okay because you know it stayed in the film, stayed in the video. Um, and that, um, and that he had, and that he had done, he had done a, uh, I believe it was a super soldier conference in near Vegas. 
either was Vegas or Henderson, Nevada, somewhere now near near there. I think it was a Lorian Fenton uh, convention. And at, did, if I'm not mistaken, actually um, Stephen D. Kelly might have been at that particular uh, 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 speaking there because uh, he gets he's also a bit looped in with these guys uh, a little bit and uh, at the time and uh, there was some weird thing that happened they're claiming that they all got abducted and taken into a, a truck and and apparently they were all all the all the um, all them cats were there uh, including Stephen and and uh, I, I've actually um, questioned Stephen about that and he doesn't recall any of that actually happening so, um, but again, um, uh, at the same time, I, he says that he's heard that he's really badass in the astral plane, um, which, you know, hey, I think it's always good to be badass in the astral plane. Uh, you know, he's a big stud. Good for him. Okay. So that being, <laughs> let's move on <laughs> on that. Okay. So, um, now with, the, the the reason why I I, I want to bring this up is because uh, Miles Johnson and, and and Christine speculated that there might have been you know an accidental overdose with aspirin or some sort of medications that he might have been taken because he was targeted so that was determined there. Um, now uh, if 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 Miles is saying that it was an overdose and this is going to wrap this up clean and simple, what kind of overdose is he talking about? Because James Rink is basically speculating that he had a drug drug overdose and he actually shows or alludes to the fact that he probably OD'd because he had a history of a drug problem and he shows actual footage of Max in the past being high on some you know prescription medications that he stole at the time and here's the thing we all know that Max Spears we all know that Max Spears uh, has, uh, you know, ha has a drug addiction. And one of the things, had a drug addiction. Let me say it in, in the past tense because he says he had a drug addiction. And I listened to a few interviews where he was wanting to talk about it, that people who were SRA victims and MyLab victims and MK Ultra victims like him had drug problems. And, and he wanted to help those who were like him be healed is, is, is how I understood it. So, um, it, you know, he wanted to pass on his knowledge, and you know, it's it's like you know, if you're if you've been sexually abused, um, you might have a, a propensity to 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 have a drug issue. That's a, that's a direct correlation. Same kind of thing here. Um, you know, people who go through these programs, you know, would probably tend to want to escape with drugs or medication. Who could blame them, really, in a sense, right? Um, so. So, so that was going on, but but now you have James Rink coming out and speculating, with basically just speculating. I mean, really, these people are just speculating. They're not looking at facts and drawing drawing any analysis to them or questioning the the validity of the stories or going, hey, this part doesn't really connect right. Why is this not really matching up right? Which is also indicating that he was sick, something was wrong with him, and why couldn't he have been like had something else? Maybe he was being poisoned at the time. Maybe he was being energetically um, attacked. Maybe he was. Maybe they gave him something. Maybe he was injected with something. Maybe you know. Maybe who knows what would have happened to. But we we have these people already really giving him a character assassination. Going, oh yeah, he was just a drug addict. He probably binged on something. Uh, and then, and then we have someone saying, "Oh, he was so sick that he binged on aspirin. That must be it. We can't wait for the uh, autopsy." And then we have Miles Johnson himself making the statement that I just read, and that was verbatim, by the way. I I, I wrote down what I saw on Facebook. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of things here that we have to, uh, you know, I'm I'm questioning. What is the real story here? There's also, uh, you know, ex and, and, and there, you know, you listen to the video of him being on his last interview. I, I think maybe we should take that. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about even saving that onto my own hard drive because I think it's substantial evidence of, of huge neglect. If you had Max Spears missing a show for three days because he had a headache and, and knew something was wrong with him, don't you think this Monica lady would have known that? Oh, but she's a fine, fine lady, I'm sure. Where is Monica? Why isn't she coming out and talking to anybody or giving her side of the story? 
Uh, we hear, uh, you know, an explanation that a doctor showed up and, and, and chews her out, basically, or, or has, has an, snaps at her for why isn't this man at the hospital, and yet when the police arrive to take him to the hospital, he's not allowed access to Max, and they give no explanation for it. They just say, oh, well, we were, he was not, the police was not allowed access to him. Well, what for? Did, did did Monica like you know did a bunch of people barricade the door and not let the the, the police get in? Did, were the police actually allow that to happen, or were the police giving higher orders from someplace else that just leave this dude alone? Were the police in on it? Is it is it is it that deceptive? I was I was wondering that. That's an odd thing that the police would just walk away from a dying man. A man who was actually in, 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 you know, in needed medical attention and a doctor choose the person who, who he's staying with, go take this person. And then the nebulous six hours and the spiritual, you know, um, whatever happened ceremony to revive him. But as I, I did a show last week with, uh, Duncan O'Finian, CIA, um, you know, augmented, uh, admin, you know, and, and according to his theory, that, that that was probably most likely a satanic ritual to harvest his soul. Which would make sense if Mike Aquino was involved in this. Uh, I also want to specify, too, that, uh, you know, Christine Hart is linked to Mike Aquino. Apparently, they battle on the astral plane. Or she's had, you know, contact with him, just like a lot of, these, a lot of the guys who are in these programs have. Or they're somehow um, brought into the super soldier. Although when you listen to Mike Aquino's interview on Buzzsaw with Sean Stone, because I did listen to it, Mike Aquino basically denies everything. He denies the, the monarch uh, programming. He denies, um, he denies, that you know, he, he does say that, you know, the CIA did do some of those things, you know, the torture and all that kind of stuff, but says that I told them that it wasn't going to work and it didn't work. We found it to be a failure, and so it, it, does, it no longer exists. And, uh, and, and and kind of was seemed very, um, you know, his, his whole interview was, was about um, bringing um, the um, stopping war and bringing the, bringing, um, the future consciousness into, into a peace consciousness uh he does go into the temple of set and all those other things but it wasn't a, an interview where you know you obviously you know no one's going to you know be interviewed by uh you know a famous director's son on probably one of the most mainstream alternative media news outlets out there with a name like that i'm sure that he's not going to sit there and divulge that information even if it does exist Right? Don't you think? I mean, hell, Hillary won't even come out and say what's on the emails. And we've got this whole other email scandal that's like right in there with Watergate uh, during this particular election. And there's some gangster stuff happened to Bernie Sanders. I mean, obviously, we're not getting the full story on that. Why would we think that Mike Aquino, a known Satanist who, who was part of the Temple of Set, would come out and like actually go, oh yeah, I've been torturing little kids and, and we've been killing them and murdering them. And so Douglas Dietrich talks about on his show and everybody else that's, you know, all the other, you know, monarch programming people that we see out there talking about what's going on. Yeah, like he's going to come out and go, yeah, it's me. Uh, that's how blatant we are here at the NSA. I think not. Really. I mean, if you think about it, the guy's been on Oprah. And you have to question, why has he been on Oprah? All right, maybe I should shut up because I don't want to be targeted. <laughs> if something happens to me. But, you know, I'm already targeted. So, you know what? Like, who cares at this point? Uh, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's. That's going on too. So I might, I might as well just talk because guess what? I ain't got nothing to lose, and at least people can you know uh, listen listen to this, this this information and decide for yourself. I'm having an issue with what these guys are saying, and it it's not adding up for me. Their stories don't match. They seem vague. It seems odd. Uh, it, it, you know, and and then you know to have Miles Johnson just come up and say, "Oh, uh, we're we're gonna we're uh, I'm, we're still waiting on the autopsy, but I'm almost you know positive that it's gonna be a drug overdose, and this will just wrap it up in, in nice, clean, and simple. Nice, clean, and simple. I don't think we can have nice, clean, and simple on this. 
It's already not nice, clean, and simple. So you're telling me that having a, 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 an autopsy is going to, like, confirm everything for me? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of like it, it, even we can even look at, at, at the autopsy report for Prince and go, okay, well, Prince had a drug addiction, so he had a drug overdose. Of course he did. Of course he had a drug overdose. They all have drug overdoses, don't they? How does your death get faked if you have a big mouth or you're going to do something that's going to actually really change people or the world or whatever? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they had a drug overdose. Oh, they, they died. Oh, you know, oh, somebody just randomly shot them while they were walking down the street. Uh, we think it was a robbery, but you know, he just happened to have information leakage about the DNC emails. But, you know, he's dead now. <laughs> But we don't know. We're just going to shove that under the rug. Oh, they committed suicide because they were so depressed and, you know, they were on the skits and everything happened to them. So they just suicide themselves. Max was so overwhelmed by Mike Aquino that he had to, like, you know, take out a, a bottle of, you know, Xanax and down it as much as possible so he could go fuck up an interview in Poland, his last interview, and not be able to, like, speak clearly. I'm sure that's what happened, right? I'm sure that's what happened. Isn't that what happened? Oh no! Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He pro he took too much aspirin. Like, like, what is what? Are, what are people? What is he? An idiot? He was he was an intelligent man. Like he's gonna like like oh one aspirin's not good enough. Let me take the whole bottle. Maybe that'll do it because his headache's so horrible. I mean, like I would. Hey, wouldn't you just go? Maybe I should try something a little harder. Maybe I should smoke some pot. Maybe I should eat some cannabis. That's what I would have done. If I had a headache and felt like I was being electronically attacked, I'd, I'd, I'd go, where's a, where's a brownie at? I need it. I don't know if they have that in Poland there. Doesn't sound like to me like, you know, the, the you know. Oh, you know, spiritual, you know, uh, seances, you know, spiritual stuff, you know, six hours after you're dead and you don't allow the police to take a body to the to the hospital. Even though the doctor says, you know, you know, but you're allowed to keep the body for another six hours during. I, I had somebody die where I was living at one time. I, one of my my roommates dropped dead in the bathroom. Okay, and when they came in there, there was a thorough investigation. I was suspect until they could determine what had happened because because everything's on the table. That's how it works here in America. In a small town with 2,000 people even. And unfortunately, the guy, his, all of his, 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 uh, his organs failed him all at once. He was, he was a recovered alcoholic, but apparently he waited too long. And so the damage was done, and it took his life, and it was pretty much instant. And they determined that right there. They were able to figure that out there before doing an autopsy. And gave me a card. They, they, they had an investigator police. They had every, they had a, a you know the what do you call it? the guy who you know the the DNA people you know the the you know the the come out and look at things and whatever you know whatever those people I, I don't know my mind's blanking on that word because I'm so because <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm information overload on, on Max Spears but this is how this is how I. I, I, I've been seeing it. The, 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 this, this is the, the research that I've done, and a friend of mine's done. Leslie, we, we've been go, she, my friend. My friend Leslie's my 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 right my right hand man. You know, woman. You know, I mean, she she dissects things. She's a great uh, investigator, detective on stuff. And and again, I've been curious. I, I, I want to know what happened. I want to I want to understand. What is going on here? Uh, and if you do connect the dots, you can. He mentions Michael Aquino and Buzzsaw in his like the state. His last thing, he's he's trying to say the words over and over again to them. All right. Well, we're going to be right back with Barry Prince, and we're going to talk about the DNC and Bernie Sanders and Hillary. Stay tuned. Can you talk about, can you talk about, uh, just give us a blow by blow. I know you've put out your own video, but yeah. for the purposes yeah. of everyone watching, some of whom are not going to know uh, the details. So the long short of it is about two months ago, um, we had that conference and he spoke and uh, it was very well received 
and he decided to stay on. There's a very fine lady called Monica Duval, who is a publisher, publisher and uh, she naturally uh, felt that he was a good vehicle for publication of his works. So Max stayed on, and he stayed with Monica. Now, one of the other key players here is Stuart Sverdlo, because uh, there's a picture published quite recently of Stuart with Max and Monica. And let, this is a happy thing. These people are very, very nice people. Everybody's a lovely time. And this is totally pleasant and just great. And to hear on Saturday evening that Max had died, you know, virtually finished as your conference finished, was a hell of a bloody shock. Right. Now, in the meantime, there's another player on this. She's called Christine Joanna Hart, and she's got a show on Revolution Radio as Queen of Heart in the States. Okay? Now, there's a major connection here with the astral super soldiers, because Christine Joanna Hart is a British mainstream broadsheet journalist from London's Fleet Street. And she's been a super soldier and she's been investigating, um, she's got right up to the head of the real IRA, she's investigated key players in terror, and a lot of people are wondering how she ever got there, but the bottom line is that she shares a lot of the attributes to a lot of the sort of uh, super soldier people. She knows Aquino, this guy, Aquino, she's been battling with him in the astral, and this is all on her show. She's explained all this on her show on Revolution Radio, which I republished with their permission on basis of it's up to like 30 parts or something. Okay, and, and just to be clear here, because there are people listening that are not going to know who Michael Aquino is, uh, yeah, he well, is a black. Every character needs explained. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a black magician. Uh, he was based uh, in San Francisco, to my knowledge. I don't know if he's still there. Well, I've heard that he's essentially uh, a much worse, a, a, a far more. I better be careful what I say. Um, a far more intensely dangerous character than. In, than Britain's Jimmy Savile, who was essentially, it's been claimed by sources that this Jimmy Savile was basically the the, uh, the elite's child catcher. Uh, but that, and he was sanctioned by the BBC for like 40 years, 50 years uh, on BBC television. Could we cut to the chase and talk about a little more recent events that may have led to his death? Okay, so let's back, let's jump to Poland. So he's gone to Poland. Uh, we have, we've had the conference, and I fly back, uh, and uh, Kieran flies back, but Max stays. So basically, Max is uh, staying uh, with uh, Monica Duval. Uh, very nice. Uh, they're, uh, and they're getting on very well, and they've shot, from what I understand, three very nice interviews in Poland. Very nice atmosphere, and I think they were published yesterday. Uh, and Max basically was building up uh, to really tell them very important things. Okay, so and in terms, sorry, uh, in terms of to get back to the Saturday night and and when you got word, can you can you go down that road a bit? Okay, Monica, Monica Duval and the other lady uh, Madeline sent me text messages which I received all at the same time because I don't need to switch my phone on right at like quarter past six after the, we finished at Passing Clouds. I go through these text messages and I'm on my way, which I have, I'm making my way back to, um, back to devices, which have brought all these books, which anyway, so I need to go back on the train, back a hundred, you know, 150 miles back to, um, so um, I get this text message, Max is dead. So I then call Madeline uh, in Poland to find out what the hell's happened. And she's very distraught. They're in tears and very emotional. Max is dead and we're desperately trying to get hold of his next of kin, his mother, right? So uh, I then, standing at a, at a tube station, 
and I get a call, I talk to Monica, and she is extremely distraught that they cannot revive Max. So the, the, she mentioned something about three doctors trying to revive him. He just, he's passed, he's found him uh, passed out, not breathing. She's called in the emergency services. They're desperately trying to revive him. Now, I'm not sure it was officially declared dead at 1600 hours Warsaw time, which would be six o'clock British time, or whether it was six o'clock p.m. Warsaw time. But if that was the case, it would be eight o'clock our time. People have got to understand that from London time to Warsaw time, there's two hour difference. So what's, what's, six, what's four o'clock in the afternoon in Warsaw, I think is six o'clock in the afternoon for us. Am I getting that right? No, now? you're getting that backwards. Uh, so it's two hours later as you go yeah. east. So if you, if, if for you, when you got the call, it might've been six o'clock if it was that late, I don't know. If you left my conference, I thought perhaps you left my well, conference. We left at about six o'clock, quarter past half. All right, six. so you left at about six British time. Then it's actually yeah. more like 8 p.m. in Warsaw. Right, okay. So, okay, well, whether, how long he, he'd be declared dead is relatively important here because it determines whether it be even conceivable that he could be revived. The bottom line is, if there's any kind of hope with somebody's death, do your best, you do everything you can to try and revive somebody. So if somebody says there may be some hope, uh, well, let, let's wish there is hope. Now, I had to jump into a train that was basically for communication for the next hour. So at the start of that train journey, uh, Monica's, just before it started, uh, Monica's voice went from crisis to possible hope. Now, that is where the confusion arose that he was actually in a coma and hadn't died. And that's all. There's then this gap of about an hour, which I'm in a, and can't really communicate. You can get about a couple of minutes or 30 seconds on the phone with the, with the mountains and the hills and things when you're using the mobile phone network on it. Right. And so, you know, your communication isn't that good. If you're lucky, you might get the right bit of line where you get a good signal for three or four minutes. But you're going under tunnels and all sorts of things. So basically, it was another hour and basically a half, roughly about another 90 minutes before I was able to get stable communication. I it was back home. And that's when Monica was once again extremely distraught and he, there was no question of it at all. James, uh, uh, Max was dead. But in the meantime, people had been firing things around that he was he rocked dead and it was in a coma and the whole thing goes completely out of hand. And that's all baloney, right? Max was dead, dead and wasn't coming back. There was a period of time when maybe there could have been some hope. But that, like five minutes, then I was in the train for the next hour and a half. So let's get that all in context. Okay, fine. Basically, Max died. Okay, now did we... afternoon of saturday afternoon okay and the information you got was that uh i correct me if i'm wrong what you relayed to me is that uh some kind of uh fluid was coming out of his body uh are you talking about okay, for, right. for days right. on end or are you talking this is a sudden uh you know breach of fluid or you know i don't you said it was black but uh it oh could have God, been from the lower intestine right. After, after uh, I got back, now we're thinking now late, late at night on the Saturday night, uh, four, or, four or five hours later, I, uh, Monica is still in a hell of a state of distress because she's got Max there. And she, I, she then explained to me that earlier, but she didn't give me a time frame. So I don't know whether this happened on Friday, whether it happened a few hours or minutes before he was declared dead or whatever i don't know that information so and we don't know the volume of liquid that came out of max but basically monica explained that a black fluid was coming out of max's nose and mouth and anus basically he was dumping black fluid now i have no idea how much was involved we don't know what the fluid was we have no evidence and that is what an autopsy has to analyze 
and an official investigation has to analyze. And anything else on top of that is pure speculation. Okay. All right. Now, and and so subsequent, subsequent I, to that, yes, lost consciousness and revived. I understand. Uh, so, is there? Have you been able to talk to Monica uh, any I further? I literally off the phone. Uh, Monica literally called about twenty minutes ago before I literally started, and she has seen my my YouTube thing, and I knew she'd be unhappy with that. But the, the bottom line is, when somebody dies, and there's any, I mean, when somebody, a, a young man dies, they need to know what the cause of death is, and that has to be just determined by an autopsy or by official bodies and when they do that then they will give us the actual details and uh, that may be quite some time because if, um, if whatever the authorities do with this procedure when you're abroad and you're in a foreign country uh, especially uh, well it, it, you know it, it being her, his mother has to go there I thought his mother was en route on Sunday but I got a message from her this morning that she's not going to be there until tomorrow so, okay, but let me ask you this because uh, you said there were, it sounded like two or three doctors trying to revive him, if I understood. It was, to, I was told that there were some like three doctors that made attempts to revive him. All right, him. so it doesn't somebody, before uh, removing his body from her apartment, because he had stayed there the whole time, uh, don't they have to give a, a report to even to her? saying uh writing down the cause of death in their opinion at least uh i'm sure they do but as, as i have not got that information okay and i don't think you i think you can establish a time of death but an autopsy has to determine a call now the point is uh monica has said that max was taking medication now i had other and again, these are all interested parties that may want to muddy the waters. So we've got to be very careful here that he was taking medication, which was being given to him from a certain person. And he may have vastly exceeded that medication. And Monica said she didn't know whether uh, Max had exceeded that med medication. And if anybody exceeds the medication, you know, they're asking for trouble. And, you know, that, that's it. And, and if, if you take too many aspirin, ordinary aspirin if you take a whole dose of that it'll burn the stomach walls and if you keep doing it you know you're gonna you're gonna have hemorrhaging well there you go so what we you know what we're really talking about here is these are not isolated incidents if max has been killed and uh the evidence as far as i'm concerned and as an intuitive i can tell you uh right away this is what i got uh then this is part of a larger picture and well, it I is not to also make it clear that i don't think monica duval is got, and I, she's a fine person i don't think she has any active participation in this I, I understand uh but but what i'm saying is that he could be targeted from long distance uh i i know that i have been and i know it works if if they want to do it now the reason is i'm i wanted to look at this is because i think we need to know uh why now why why target him now they could have brought him back in and tried to reprogram him or had he gone so far off the reservation as a super soldier becoming a whistleblower that they decided they had to silence him did if he well, have I some mean, special I mean, knowledge i mean if he was going to come out with stuff uh the stuff he came out with on um, christine joanna hart show because the last time he was on he was on the first show on the thursday and he pulled out in the second hour so uh, that would have been prime time in the afternoon in the United States. Uh, Christine Hart's show uh, is uh, goes out from 7 p.m. from 9 o'clock here. She's from in England. She was interviewing him for an hour, and then he pulled out, and then she basically just pulled out as well. She went in a hell of a roasting from Revolution Radio. So as late as Thursday, Max was, was on air. Okay, do you know why? Do you know why he pulled out? Did you ever hear? I don't know because uh, next day was it was Friday and then I, I was I was preparing for, for for this lecture, but I got two text messages from Christine Joanna Hart questioning was he murdered, and then I says no, look, leave us alone. This is a tragic time. Let the let the diversity theories. And she said it again. Was she was he murdered? Am I right in understanding that he was speaking at a conference at this time? 
uh, the day before, or was this a misunderstanding? No, no, no. He was, the only thing he was doing as far as we're concerned was his last appearance was on the, the Christy Joanna Hart show, and that's at 7, that's not at 7 to 9 p.m. our time, so uh, uh, Warsaw time, it's uh, 9 until 11 p.m. I think that's sort of right around. Uh, and what, and uh, on what day was that? That was last Thursday. Okay, so that was Thursday, and then was he taken ill on the Friday? Was that your understanding? Uh, what actually happened between Friday and Saturday? In that timeline, the only person who can answer that is Monica. Okay. Uh, well, Chris, I mean, for some reason, he crashed off air and didn't do the second hour on on the Thursday evening. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I see in the chat that Stuart Swerdlow uh, was was somehow in contact with uh, with Max recently. Yeah, I mean, there was, that's no secret. There's a very nice photograph of Monica with Max and Stuart at dinner together. That's about three or four weeks ago. So I don't know what level of continued contact uh, Stuart has had. Uh, I understand from Sarah that uh, uh, wife was giving him some medicated, uh, uh, some medication of some kind, uh, prescription drugs, I suppose is the, is the term. I don't know what they are. I don't know how much it was. I don't know how much Max actually took. So I mean, those if if, if they took if he took them at all. Okay. Uh, uh, do that, and that was the case. Have you been in touch with Sarah then since uh, Max's death? Yes, I was. I told I was the person who broke the news to her, and she was on the phone with me. Uh, we were or on uh, WhatsApp only about three or four hours ago, and she was very angry about the Squirtle connection and the prescription drug.